There are so many flatbreads all over the world, each with its own rich history. Today we will be creating the staple flatbread from Finland called rye hardtack rings. For centuries, rye was the most important and commonest grain in Finland. It was used to make Finns daily bread, so for the poorest households, this bread was the only meal of the day. Finland's cultural position between east and west has also left its mark on bread making. Western Finland baking was influenced by Scandinavian countries, while Eastern Finland was exposed to Russian influences. Rye is a perfect type of grain to be grown in the northern country of Finland because it is able to thrive in the cold, harsh climate, and in contrast with other grains, is sown in autumn. In the past, people in Western Finland favored hard bread and would carry out huge bread baking operations a couple times a year, filling their ceilings with bread. The ring-shaped loaves were put onto stakes and dried under the rafters of the kitchen for later use during the year. Now that we have discussed some of the history of this bread, it is time to demonstrate how to make it. First we will be scaling dried yeast. The use of yeast in Finnish breads was first introduced in the 18th century. Before that, dough was leavened using a mash from the bottom of a beer barrel. Now we will be scaling 70 degree water which controls the dough's overall temperature and the consistency of the dough. Next we will scale the salt. This enhances color, gluten structure, and flavor in our bread. Finally we will scale the rye flour which brings with it flavor and great nutritional content. After scaling all the ingredients, it's important to mason floss your other materials, such as a thermometer, cookie cutter, two baking sheets, a medium-sized bowl, rolling pin, dusting flour, spray, and plastic wrap. Taking the medium-sized mixing bowl, you want to first pour in all of your water. Now let the yeast dissolve in it. After this, you want to pour in half of the scaled out rye flour. It's important to stir this mixture 50 times in one direction. After stirring in the flour 50 times, you want to sprinkle in and mix the salt before adding the remaining rye flour to the bowl. Once everything is incorporated and there is no more dry flour, you want to turn out the dough onto a lightly floured surface and knead it for 3 to 4 minutes. After you are done kneading the dough and developing the gluten, you will need to organize the dough, making it look neat. Then return the dough into a freshly oiled bowl, covering it with plastic wrap to keep in moisture, and let it rest for an hour and a half. While you wait for your dough to proof, 
you can begin mise-en-placing by preheating the oven to 425 degrees. Then you can oil and flour your two baking sheets for later. After the hour and a half is over, you want to flour your table generously and then flip the dough onto the floured surface. Gently degas your dough and evenly spread it to make dividing easier. You will want to divide the dough into four sections. To shape the dough correctly, you will need to round it by bringing the sides to the center. Then you want to lightly flatten the rounds between your floured palms. Now you want to gently roll out each dough into 8 inch rounds. You can use a ruler to measure. The closer you are to 8 inches, the better the thickness will be for the final bake. Once you have rolled out your rounds, cut 2 inch circles in the center of the dough with a cookie cutter. Let the dough rest for an additional 20 minutes as a final proof. Right before placing the bread in the oven, poke it with a fork at 2 inch intervals. This gives the bread the defining name hardtack. Like many other hardtack breads, it is very dry. This enables it to have a very long shelf life, historically lasting over months of time. Having long-lasting breads like this was a necessity during sea travels, migration, times of war, and harsh winters. This bread will bake in the oven for about 15 minutes or until done. Once it is ready, remove it from the baking sheets and place on a rack to cool. Right before you start tasting and evaluating your bread, 
you need to get a cutting board and a bread knife. This bread has a sharp, sour, tangy taste, which is fairly unique. It is also very dense and chewy. In the past, bread such as this were dried and then rehydrated in soups or boiling water, similarly to how some people use crackers. In evaluating the finished product, the shaping was slightly off, giving it a more rustic feel, but the overall color and texture is ideal for this type of bread. I hope you enjoyed watching the segment on flatbreads.